Hello and welcome back to the Waters and Stanton video channel. You know, sometimes you come across an item which is incredibly handy and not overly expensive. Got it on the screen there. Got one here. It's the AV20. There's also an AV40. The AV20 is an HF VSWR meter. And uh, the uh, VH, uh, the AV40 is a VHF UHF one. It doesn't look much, does it? Well, one of the attractions is that it is so simple, but it is so useful. You know, I always carry one of these with me when I'm out mobile or portable because it really tells me all I need to know. Now, it's a cross-needle meter, and perhaps... Uh, it's uh, useful to actually explain, first of all, what a cross-needle cross uh, VSWR power meter is. So let's, let's examine what, uh, what actually a cross-needle meter is. Here's the front panel of the AV20. By the way, it not only measures VSWR, but it also indicates power at two levels. Full scale is either 0 to 30 watts or 0 to 300 watts. The meter's got two arcs. If you look at the left-hand one, that's the forward power, and that's calibrated 0 to 30 or 0 to 300 watts. And there's a button on the front which selects the power range, that blue button at the bottom. And then the other arc, the arc on the right-hand side, is the reflected power, and that's calibrated 0 to 100 watts. Anything over 100 watts, and you've got quite a high VSWR. So they've broadened the scale out on the reflected power, not to 100 watts. So we've got two meters. The meter on the left travels forward and measures forward power, and the meter on the right travels backwards and measures reflected power. Now there's a third calibration on the meter with some angled straight lines and where those two meters cross and intercept one of those straight lines indicates the VSWR. That perhaps sounds a bit more complicated than it really is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some power into the meter and just show you how it works. Here we've got a VSWR of approximately 1.6 to 1. If you can see the needles cross between the, the 0.5 and the 0.7 lines. Now we've got a reading of 1.4 uh, to 1 VSWR. And finally here we've got a near perfect match. Now I suppose the most obvious thing missing on this meter is the ability to read PEP. All it will do is read a sort of average power and that's really largely determined by the uh, neat meter movement. Some meters are livelier than others but let me just show you I'm going to run a hundred watts SSB into this meter and you can see what the meter actually reads. It'll be, a, well I expect it'll be roughly about half the true PEP. So anyway let's take a look. Interesting experiment. I'm running 100 watts now, and as you can see, and as I expect, the meter is hovering around sort of the 50 watt mark on the left hand side, and that's because SSB is measured in peak envelope power, and that meter just hasn't got the inertia to follow the, uh, the peaks, so it tends to read uh, an average power. So. If you're monitoring with a meter like this, don't worry that you're only getting around about 50 watts indicated. The peak is usually about double what the meter indicates. The meter that we've just been watching is the AV20, which covers 160 meters to 2 meters, so it's an interesting range. And that has power range, full scale deflection power range of 30 watts and 300 watts. The other meter in the range is the AV40, and this covers 2 meters and 70 cms, and the power range there is 15 watts and 150 watts. And I'll put a link to both these meters below this video. So they're two very interesting meters. Uh, they are not expensive. The great thing about the cross-needle meters is you can see everything at an instant. You can see the forward power, you can see the reverse or reflected power, and you can see the SWR ratio, uh, monitoring it in real time. So say you haven't got a peak 
indication, but if you accept that roughly what the, indi what the meter indicates on SSB is about half your true PEP, then you won't be far off. And of course, if you want to do absolute measurements, the easiest way on most transceivers is to switch over to RTTY, press the button, and you'll get a steady carrier at full power, whatever power you've selected. One th other thing I should mention is both these meters are illuminated. If I turn the meter around, you can see on the back here that there's a socket there for a DC supply. There's a lead supplied with the meters, and all you need to do is connect that supply to 12 volts. That supply is solely for illumination. It doesn't need to be used. The meter um, is passive in as much as it's not powered and therefore that 12 volt supply is only used to illuminate the meter. So that really is all about the cross needle meter, how you use it, how you read it and as I say these two meters are very very popular because they're not overly expensive. You can shove them in your car a glove box or wherever or put it on top of the radio. Uh, it's a reasonable size and uh, you can monitor what's happening power-wise in your home radio station. Thank you for your support, much appreciated, and if you want a BSWR meter, we've got quite a range actually, so check on my website, but uh, these are very popular. Just to remind you, we've got the complete Zigu line in stock. Here you see the X6100, which is 5 watts, 10 watts on an external power supply, and built-in ATU great price and also the G90 which is incredibly popular 20 watt transceiver with built in ATU again at a very great price and there's other models and accessories on a website check it out in the meantime enjoy your ham radio you take care and I'll look forward to seeing you as usual in the next video bye